In this video, we are discussing thread synchronization. Whenever multiple threads will be operating in our system, then they might be demanding the same shareable resource. And it is a problem known as the critical section problem. So, in case of critical section, when the multiple threads are demanding the same shareable resource, that is the same shareable database, same shareable file, same shareable some other IO resources, then in that case, if we do not have any synchronization that which thread will be accessing which one earlier or later, then obviously some mal results may get produced. So, this thread synchronization is a very serious problem. So, how to do this thread synchronization? We will be discussing that one in our section today. So, synchronization means we are putting some ordering in the multi threading environment execution. So, why we should synchronize threads? When we start two or more threads within a program, there may be a situation when multiple threads try to access the same resource and finally, they can produce an improper result due to concurrency issues. So, due to some uh, not maintaining the synchronization between the threads, it may produce some incorrect result for us. So, we can easily synchronize the tasks in Java by using the keyword or the using the block that is known as the synchronized block. And every object in Java is associated with a concept that that is known as the monitor. The monitor is used to control the access of the resources at a given point in time. So, monitor is nothing but which will actually monitoring that how the resources will get allocated to the respective processes. So, to have the better idea on this thread synchronization, let us go for one practical demonstration where we will be discussing this topic with one sample code. In this program, we are defining one class. The name of the class is transfer. It is having only one method that is the send message. So, this is the method we are having. So, this method is a very simple method. It is having one string to get printed and then it will wait for one second, delay for one second. So, that is why we have put this 1000 milliseconds as an input argument to this slip method, which is public static void slip long millis, which throws interrupted exception. We have dis discussed that one in the earlier videos also. That is why we have put this, uh, put it under the try block and catch block is handling this interrupted exception. So, e dot print stack trace. So, the respective uh, body for this catch block is this one. After after waiting for say one second of duration, then this uh, message is sent, message concatenation is sent, this particular string will get printed. Now, here we are having one class, the name of the class is message transfer, which extends thread. So, as it is extending thread, so here we can write the override the method that is run here. Message transfer is the respective constructor. It is having one private string message and transfer object that is a transfer class object. You, here you can find that here we have defined the trans, uh, transfer class. So, transfer class object message transfer. Message transfer is nothing but the constructor of this class that is a message transfer which takes this string message and transfer object trans as input argument to instantiate this instance variables within the class transfer message transfer and here as this particular class is extending thread class so that's why we are overriding the run method here and here we have used the synchronized message transfer you can find that this message transfer is nothing but the transfer class object and synchronized message transfer within this synchronized block we have write, we have written we have called this method that is a message transfer dot send message that means we have called this method under the synchronized block so, what will happen when we will be having multiple objects under this message transfer class and when for all of them uh, we will be calling the start method. Okay, let me discuss this one. I think that will clear your conception. So, public class sync thread. So, this is a class we have defined under this we are having the main function and we have here we have defined one transfer class object that is a transfer trans is equal to new transfer. And message transfer objects that, that means this class objects we are defining so that we can we can call the start we can call the start uh, method which will call in turn the run method here. So that is why message transfer message 1 is equal to new message transfer what is this this is a respective message and this is a transfer class object you can find that we defined 
that respective constructed earlier so that is the string message and transfer object trans so the string message here is hello in this case for the second message transfer object message 2 we are defined we are passing this world as the string and next time we are passing this java as the string and this trans is nothing but the, the transfer class object we are passing that one and then message one dot start message two dot start and message three dot start we have called that means this particular start methods will be calling this run method so now what will happen when this particular message transfer dot send message will be executed this method will be executed then other other respective start other respective start methods whatever you have called from other message transfer objects so they will be uh, they will be uh, they cannot enter into the critical section they will be waiting in the queue and because we have put this message transfer dot send message method calling within the synchronous block so let me go for the execution you can find that what is happening you see hello is sending hello is sent so that means this particular codes are getting executed when we call this send message you can find that then java is sending java is sent world is sending world is sent in this way the things are taking place so that means once this send message is been called the respect from the respective uh, cl class from the respective class object then until completion of this send message method the next send message method which is being called from other object will not get initiated and that is the purpose of our synchronized block here so if we comment this particular block let me tell you that what is going to happen if you see if i make this particular block commented so on this, that means this message transfer or send message message it is not under the synchronous block here so what will happen if you go for execution you can find that hello is sending java is sending then sometimes back we will we'll, sometimes after we're getting this hello is sent java is sending here then java is sent so now see there is no synchronization so there is no synchronization all the all the send message method, methods are executing in parallel and that's why the outcome the output is being obtained in a very haphazard way and one thing is very important here you can find that we're having this hello sending java sending world sending hello is sent world is sent java is sent if i execute my code one second you might be getting them in some different order if you might be getting them in some different order so yeah, so that's why because there is no uh, synchronization but if we put this synchronous block enabled here and comment it you can find that how the codes are getting executed so i think now uh, the conception is getting clear to you that so hello is sending hello is sent java is sending java is sent and world is sending then world is sent so now i think you have got the idea what is the purpose of synchronous block in our java code Thanks for watching this video.